How's everyone doing today? I have a Blu-ray collection update with nine pickups. And if you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Uh, it's all Arrow Video and MVD titles. And the first one is a out of print title. Actually, the slipcover is out of print. I didn't realize it was so out of print. It's crazy. The only one on eBay with the slipcover is asking for 90 bucks. Wowzers. And this movie is not good. <laughs> I remember seeing this, I want to say on the Sci-Fi Channel years ago when I was younger and thinking it was cheesy fun. Rewatching it now, it does not hold up. It is just a mess and just falls flat for me. It's a beautiful addition for it, though, if you are a fan. Uh, it has Lance Henriksen in it, uh, Matt McCoy, uh, D. Wallace, and uh, basically it's a Bigfoot, Yeti, Sasquatch movie, uh, and the creature looks so ridiculous. But it does have like rear window vibes uh, because the one guy is like a paraplegic and he's like watching the neighbor and he's trying to, you know, warn people about, you know, the abominable, uh, you know, Yeti Sasquatch. Uh, so Bigfoot. Uh, and are there any really great Bigfoot movies out there? Let me know what your favorite Bigfoot movie is. I've seen a bunch. Uh, there's a couple that were, were decent, but most are subpar for me. I know there are big fans of that genre. Uh, but to me, this one just falls flat. I I wanted to like it more than I did. There was one decent kill in here. There was one kind of cool one. But besides that, uh, there was some rough acting outside of uh, some of the well-known people that I mentioned. Um, the plot isn't, you know, it doesn't really stand out too much. And then the creature was really weak. Uh, but again, beautiful release, slipcover. Uh, the disc could have been like improved on. MVD does these like plain white discs and put some cover art on there, uh, some disc art rather. I mean, you got great cover art, a poster, a little mini poster right here. Everything else is great, like special features and stuff, a bevy of special features right there. Uh, just beautiful release outside of these really generic looking discs. Maybe people don't care about it, but if you're a physical media fan, it's a nice added touch and it looks kind of like out of place given everything else for this release. But again, um, slipcover, crazy out of print, mind blowing to me. Uh, <laughs> if anybody wants to buy the slipcover or buy this release for me, let me know because I don't think I'm gonna keep it in my collection. That's something I don't understand. I see a lot of people uh, talk about, you know, movies that they hate that they have in their collection, they'll never watch again uh, and they're just gonna keep it. I, I, to me, that's like a hoarding mentality. It doesn't seem healthy to me. I see people post that they bought a movie uh, and they never plan to open it or watch it. I, I can't grasp that concept. Uh, so yeah, this one is definitely going to be purged from the collection soon. I, you know, rewatched it, uh, not that long ago and, uh, I've been meaning to do an update for a couple of these ones. Uh, so, uh, oof, yeah, it's gotta go. I was just shocked at the slipcover price for that. Mind blowing. Next up is Jack Frost one and two beautiful artwork. I still have the lenticular uh, vinegar syndrome release for the first Jack Frost movie. And I'm debating about letting that one go. And the slipcover for that one's, uh, I want to say like 120 bucks plus, which is crazy. And these slipcovers love the artwork, but I'm just not a big fan of the movies. The first one was cheesy, fun, okay, really. Rewatching them again, it doesn't really hold up. It's a rough watch. There's some fun moments in there. Shannon Elizabeth, you know, making her, I think her first like, you know, big screen appearance. Um, of course, she's most notably known for American Pie. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I wanted to like it a lot more. This one was even worse for me uh, about a serial killer who gets uh, some kind of like um, weird chemical on him and he turns into a snowman and starts killing people. You don't really need to know much more than that. Uh, and this one, like the sheriff goes on vacation and the snowman ends up there on like, you know, uh, uh, like an island resort kind of area. The one thing that was fun about this one are the little snowmen, uh, little snowball characters. Those guys were cool and fun. But besides that, this movie was a wreck. And this is actually the censored TV cut. So uh, this was released like a year ago and they still don't have a replacement disc for it. I heard there was delays. And the date right now is October 11th, I believe, for uh, the R-rated cut for this. And it's interesting because like there's special features on here with some uh, commentary uh, and it's the one that they're watching is the R-rated cut. Uh, so you can tell it's the way that it's cut and edited and stuff. It's, it's very noticeable. Uh, I don't think it's going to help the movie at all getting, you know, a little bit of the, uh, language and certain scenes in there, but 
uh, this one to me was just a, a wreck. Uh, beautiful artwork, but the movies are not very good. Um, I, I This is one, like, I love the artwork so much for these, but I got to let them go too. Again, really nice releases. Um, you get, this one uh, actually has reversible artwork, which is, I, I don't like that artwork, but <laughs> kind of like a CG looking snowman almost, but yeah, I don't know. I know these ones have their fans and it's kind of mind blowing to me, uh, especially the second one. People are like, we're just losing their mind about, uh, you know, getting the edited TV version for it, but the regular version is not much better. It's not going to help it. But the mini posters, a nice touch again, versatile artwork, newly commissioned artwork, the slip cover, a beautiful release, uh, you know, special feature wise and everything like that. So if you are a fan of these films, you'll definitely uh, like these releases. Well, minus the fact that this one is the censored one. So it's funny. I remember like posting about this and, and everybody's asking me, is that the new uh, replacement disc one? No, because it's not coming out for months. Um, and it took forever uh, and it's i mean still not out but i feel like there's been all these announcements for new like 4ks and stuff coming up and i just i i don't know if i'm even gonna buy them because i just think there's gonna be like you know disc issues and i feel like we've had so many in the past like year year and a half it's crazy i don't know where the quality control is like some of it is really noticeable there's some things that i think are so minute as like how do people even notice i like the friday the 13th one like a split second thing or a one second thing but some of these ones are just really bad and i just don't understand how it gets past quality control and then just the whole issue of waiting and sometimes you get to continually email some of these companies to get a reply and then you have to wait for the replacement disc some companies are really good with it kino was really good with the the hard target disc replacement and i think a lot of people don't even know there's so many issues with a lot of these ones for uh, i think the craft 4k had an issue too from my scream factory there's a bunch of ones like just google and i feel like there's there's so many. Screen Factory has a lot. I don't think people realize that too. But you're seeing a lot from uh, you know Arrow Video recently too, which is disappointing because they're one of the better companies out there releasing today. So uh, yeah, I don't know all these 4K releases. It's exciting, but at the same time a bit worrisome. Like uh, you know, I'm my expectations are a little you know tempered, and uh, I'm just thinking like these are these discs are going to have issues. They're going to have to be a disc replacement program. But hopefully that's not the case. But given everything else with all the different releases having issues over the past year year and a half that's what i'm thinking but next up is arrow video um years of lead five classic italian crime thrillers from 1973 to 1977 and they're called uh Pali Zoteshi, which is essentially crime action thriller movies uh they're really popularized during this time period of uh, the 70s and this is a limited edition box set has the movies Savage 3, Like Rabid Dogs, Cult 38, Highway Racer, and No, The Case is Happily Resolved, that title. Um, you know, these films are kind of like hit or miss for me. I've seen a few of them, uh, and Arrow Video always does an amazing job with their Blu-ray releases, but especially their box sets. Uh, so I'm going to give these ones a fair chance. Haven't opened it up and uh, checked them out yet, but... This is the Years of Lead limited edition box set. Uh, and there's a, like another edition too, but this is the limited edition one. It has the book, a uh, little booklet right there in there. So that's the thing. A lot of times they'll release like the limited edition one. And then like a few months later, they'll release one that looks very similar, but just doesn't have the booklet. And I think it's confusing to a lot of people. Um, so if you want to, you know, pay the premium prices for this, make sure you get the right one because these sets are expensive. I think this is like 90 bucks. Uh, next up is Major Dundee. <laughs> And uh, I think I'm going to get rid of this one too, actually. And I remember uh, I was posting about it and people were saying, oh, it's because it's the limited edition one again, right here. Um, and if you look on Blu-ray.com, I think it only has one listing, but there's a standard regular like Blu-ray uh, for it. And that goes for like 25 bucks. But this set right here with like the digi packs and the booklets and stuff like that and the uh, poster goes for 65. Uh, even on eBay, I was, uh, you know, having a conversation with somebody who was like, oh no, they're way cheaper than, than that. I was like, no, they're not. You're looking at the standard edition ones. And uh, even on eBay, some are going for like 75 bucks for this. Um, but there you go. Really beautiful release. Uh, has the extended edition and also theatrical, uh, which is a limited edition exclusive on here. Uh, this is directed by Sam Peckinpah, who directed The Wild Bunch uh, and then Ride the High Country and um, Straw Dogs, which is amazing. Uh, 
let me know what your favorite Sam Peckinpah movie is. For me, it's Straw Dogs, hands down. I love the continuation artwork right there. I think it's really cool. I love when uh, box sets and Blu-rays and stuff do that. Uh, sometimes uh, slip covers and stuff, and sometimes you pull out the Blu-ray um, like artwork sleeve, and that'll do it too. So I think that's cool. The movie, though, I like westerns, um, but this one to me, I wanted more from it. I didn't love it. I feel like it was unnecessarily long in some points, uh, some parts. It's it's an epic for sure. Uh, the uh, the extended one is 136 minutes, and then the theatrical is 122. I can't remember which version I saw, and I watched one of them, and I was watching the special features, and they were basically saying, you know, the, uh, neither version is very good. One of the, you know, they were saying it was kind of like a, a step backward, and apparently there's drama on the set and stuff too. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely wanted more from it, but it's a beautiful release. Charlton Heston in here. Um, you've got, uh, James Coburn, uh, Jim Hutton. And Richard Harris, Richard Harris was really good too. But uh, Charlton Heston plays Major, I was it Amos Dundee, I believe it is. Yeah, and then he's, uh, you know, a Union Cavalry officer is trying to get a expedition hunt for an Apache uh, war chief. And he gets a, his band of uh, ex-criminals and uh, Confederate POWs, including a, like an old best friend in here. And they kind of butt heads because they're on opposite sides now, uh, Richard Harris. But beautiful release i you know i wanted to like this movie so much more look at that poster artwork it's so awesome this one too i love that poster artwork really cool but i don't know i just felt like it could have been a lot better than it was and i don't know it, it, nice cinematography but i just felt like at times the the pacing was inconsistent um i don't know i just wanted more from it i just didn't love it and i wanted to but I love this edition so friggin' much, though. It's a beautiful edition. If you're a fan of this film, you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. You know, even interior artwork in the digipacks. So definitely a, a fan of the release. The movie was was okay for me. Um, I just, I wanted to like it so much more than I actually did. But uh, again, beautiful release. And there is a standard Blu-ray edition, too. If you don't want to pay the, you know, 65 bucks for this limited edition one. But a uh, bevy of special features on here, too. Next up is Drive. This is not Dry with Ryan Gosling. This is Dry with Mark DeCascos, uh, Kadeen Harrison, and Brittany Murphy. Brittany Murphy should not, like, it, I feel like her character wasn't even necessary for this movie. It was just thrown in. And it was just that her character, like, all the interactions were so awkward with her. And it just felt weird and just unnecessary to have her in there. Um, this to me though, if you're a fan of a lot of like, you know, Hong Kong action movies, I think you'll enjoy this one. Uh, it's an American made uh, one and there's some great fight sequences in here, but that's pretty much it. The plot is like secondary. It should be, you know, the plot, uh, pushes the action, but it's really the opposite way around. The action kind of pushes the plot along. Uh, Mark DeCascos is essentially, uh, like a super warrior. Essentially he has this bio engineered module in his chest that makes him super powerful and stuff and he doesn't want to have that power and he's being chased by all these people hunting him down to essentially get it back and uh he takes uh Kadeem Harrison uh hostage to you know drive him around and stuff and you know get to this doctor that can remove it and uh this is apparently a Sanaya Lathan's um screen debut she's a great actress but a ton of special features in here too and a nice slip cover for it uh, the movie is very reminiscent of Rush Hour. It actually came out before Rush Hour, but it was a direct-to-video uh, release. And I think it would have done well if it had a theatrical release. It's definitely, you know, a, you know, kind of like a, more over the top than Rush Hour as far as, you know, the cursing and some of the action sequences. And again, some of it's just really ridiculous. Um, I, I don't love it. The action sequences were great, but that's about it. That's really the only positive I can say about this movie. Uh, a lot of the other scenes just or battle attrition to sit through, just really rough. Uh, and then Mark DeCascos, I would love to see uh, Only the Strong get a blue release, that Capoeira uh, film. I think there's a few in that franchise, but the first one was so good. Uh, he's a really good actor. Um, Kadeem Harrison has been around for forever. It's good to see him in a role like this, actually. I think he's, I like the levity that he brings, uh, you know, the great comedic, he's the Chris Tucker here uh, to Mark DeCascos' Jackie Chan, if you will. Uh, but the sidekick with all the jokes and stuff like that and the puns and I do like their back and forth but sometimes it's it's a bit much uh, and I didn't love this one this one has a lot of fans 
And kind of like some people consider it a hidden gem. I don't, but um, a nice release again. You get the mini poster in here, reversible artwork, uh, MVD, uh, their rewind collection uh, is really nice. And I just, one of my only complaints is, uh, you know, the discs right there, very generic disc. Everything else is like, it doesn't make sense that the discs are like generic like that. Uh, with the reversible artwork, newly commissioned artwork, slip cover, mini poster, uh, everything else is just so beautiful about it. And that's my only complaint, my only criticism. And they, you know, if you line them up, they're all numbered at the top. Um, where's the other one in here? Abominable is number seven in the line. Um, but they have some really nice releases. If you're a fan of the films, you'll enjoy them. Next up is the Snake Girl and the Silver Haired Witch. Uh, really nice slip cover for it. And there's that artwork, which looks awesome. Look at the Silver Haired Witch right there. Uh, this one is really interesting. It's uh, Noraki Yusa, who's the director of Deo Studios. Uh, Gamera series. He uh, makes a monochrome film adaptation of a horror manga. And uh, so this is from 1968 and they call it a Twisted Tokusatsu, which is Tokusatsu is a uh, live action or TV uh, like drama kind of uh, with a lot of practical effects. Uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of times you know, having horror and sci-fi elements, but sometimes it can be more drama. Um, so this one is basically about a uh, girl who's reunited with her strange family after years in an orphanage and uh, she's in the, the family home and her mother's an amnesiac after a car accident and she's confined to, uh, her soul and sister's confined to a, a hidden attic room and a young housemaid uh, passes away uh, inexplicably of a heart attack right before the young girl arrives and it's all connected to her father's work of studying venomous snakes. There's a serpentine figure that haunts her dreams and is, this, is it the same one spying on her through the holes in the wall? So uh, this is sounds really interesting, crazy over the top. It's, uh, you know, making its Blu-ray debut and its home video premiere outside of Japan. So it's seldom seen and, uh, you know, it's a beautiful release again for it. Um, so uh, it's, it's interesting to see a lot of these releases get, uh, you know, the Blu-ray treatment or releases outside of their home country now and the booklet in here. And again, you've got reversible artwork, newly commissioned artwork, uh, special features, transfer, uh, really nice release again. I haven't seen this one yet, but I will be checking it out. That cover right there looks so awesome to me. Um, but there you go, the Snake Girl and the Silver Haired Witch. The slip cover almost has like a, you know, like a, a brush matte feel, really like that. Uh, next up is one that I have seen and it's so ridiculous. It's Lake Michigan Monster. And this is, the screenplay is written by, and uh, it's directed by, and the main star here is uh, Ryland Brixen Cole Tews. It's a long name. But this is like, uh, you know, if The Lighthouse was directed by Trey Parker and Matt Stone. That's how I would describe this movie. Um, it's uh, black and white, and it's got some Lovecraftian themes going on. And they're basically after this, uh, monster, sea monster, and this crew right here are trying to get revenge. Uh, his father was killed by the sea monster, and then there's other family ties that you find out towards the end, which the end sequence was actually part of my favorite uh, of, of this whole film. It's it's really ridiculous. If you like uh, movies like um, Cannibal the Musical, uh, without the musical aspect, uh, you, you might appreciate this. It's I'm not a fan of that one either. It's just the jokes are just kind of really juvenile and ridiculous and that's the kind of the same way here it's really you know it's low budget juvenile ridiculous humor but there are some funny moments in here it's quirky uh and it has its charm again it's to me if uh trey parker and matt stone uh were to create the lighthouse movie uh that's what this would be and I, I, it's they have a fun time with it you can tell uh band in four lakes uh they're very self-aware uh again a bevy of special features right here but this one to me, it just, it, it, was, it was a bit rough to sit through. Uh, battle of attrition. There were some funny parts, but then there were some parts that were just falls flat and just too ridiculous and didn't work for me. You got the booklet again. Uh, but again, take that into consideration. I think if you like cheesy, really silly, ridiculous movies, um, you might appreciate it a bit more. I'm really picky when it comes to my comedy movies. I feel like this is, you know, borders on like hipster stoner comedy a bit. 
Um, but again, I think this is going to have an audience. I could see this being like a, a cult uh, favorite film. I think a lot of people will enjoy this one. It just wasn't for me. I, I went back and forth because there were some scenes that I really thought were funny and then a lot of other scenes that I just didn't. So um, I think it is worth checking out if, again, you like what I mentioned. Next up is Burst City. Uh, this is uh, considered to be an early landmark Japanese cyberpunk cinema film. Uh, it's a, you know, kind of a mixture of dystopian sci-fi, Mad Max style biker war against Yakuza gangsters and the police. And it has uh, performances from members of real life Japanese punk bands, The Stain, Roosters, uh, Rockers, and INU. Uh, there's a, you know, industrial wasteland on the outskirts of Tokyo, rival punk bands, and uh, mobs gather for a battle of band style protest against construction of a nuclear power plant. And then there's Yakuza industrialists who are behind it who are, you know, trying to uh, take them down, essentially. Uh, so this is uh, from, uh, what year is 80? I want to say 82. I don't, 82, yep. Um, that's one thing that I really liked about the company Twilight Time. They had everything, all the technical aspects boxed off down at the bottom, really easy to see. This, the print is like minuscule on here, and sometimes you have to search for it. Sometimes certain companies don't even put the year on the, on the back or the runtime or anything like that. This one, you know, Arrow Video is a little bit better. You can see the runtime is highlighted a bit more right there, so in the bold text. But then the year is down there and kind of hard to see, but that's just me nitpicking a bit. Uh, but there's the booklet, and there's an advertisement for Dune in there, and then you get reversible artwork, which that's kind of cool, actually. I, I dig that artwork. The cast right there at the top, and then uh, looks like a battle axe. I dig that. So um, I haven't seen this one yet, but I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. And uh, again, beautiful release. Arrow Video, again, one of the best companies out there releasing Blu-rays today. Uh, their standard Blu-rays are amazing, but then their box set limited editions and stuff like that are just incredible. So a big stack of Arrow Video and MVD, nine titles and well, nine releases. You've got uh, the box set of Years of Lead right there with five titles, but there we go. Uh, some ones I haven't seen, some ones that didn't live up to my memory, um, some ones I just didn't really enjoy and I wanted to, uh, and a couple ones I'll mention more once I do view them, so in a subsequent video. But there you go. Let me know if you've seen any of these and what you think of them. Let me know which one is your favorite. Let me know what your favorite Arrow video release is, your favorite MVD Rewind release, and uh, what movies you'd like to see both uh, labels release in the future. Leave me those comments down below and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.